Now, if you've been listening to this show for any time at all, you have heard my investment advice, which is roundly criticized by supposed experts out there, although I've made more millionaires in America than just about anyone with this horrible advice of mine. But one piece of advice is, is that I don't invest in anything I don't understand, and I recommend you don't do the same, that you do the same, rather, that you don't invest in something unless you understand it. The second thing is, is that I personally buy, and that's also what I recommend, good growth stock mutual funds, and I buy real estate that I pay cash for. And that's all I invest in, other than my business. That's all I put money in. And um, the number of single stocks that I own, I don't invest in single stocks. The number of single stocks that I own is zero. It's too much risk. Although the mutual funds have stocks in them, there's 90 to 200 different ones, and so your risk is spread out. In the financial world, we call that diversified. you are not got all your money in one thing, because when you put your money in one single company, you are taking an inordinate amount of risk. So Wall Street Journal has an interesting article, and it's a very long article. You might want to look it up if you're interested in this subject. But it's a very sad story of exactly why I tell people not to do this. Here's the story. Gary Zabrowski started working for General Electric in 1976 at an a- aviation factory in his hometown of Lynn, Massachusetts. The job paid well, came with benefits, and for Mr. Zabrowski provided a career ladder for a man with a high school education who started out cleaning toilets. You had a job for life if you get in there, said Mr. Zabrowski, 61 years old. He rose to punch press operator and retired in 2016 after working 40 years at the century-old plant. He left GE with an annual pension of $85,000. Wow. And company stock valued at more than $280,000. Retirement looked pretty good until GE shares collapsed. All of his $280,000 was in General Electric stock, by the way. His shares are now worth about 110000 prompting a late-life job hunt. I never planned on retiring and having to go back to work, said Mr. Zabrowski, who has a monthly mortgage payment and supports a partially disabled wife. It's kind of scary. The rapid unraveling of GE has wiped out roughly $140 billion in stock market wealth in the past year. Not just at big Wall Street firms, but small investors like Mr. Zabrowski. The industrial giant is one of the most widely held U.S. stocks. By comparison, the stock value lost by GE in the past 12 months is twice the amount that vanished when Enron collapsed in 2001, and more than the combined market capitalization erased by the bankruptcies of Lehman Brothers and General Motors during the financial crisis. Longer term, GE's market cap has fallen more than $460 billion since its 2000 peak. Now, this is not a segment where Dave Ramsey picks on General Electric. That is not what this is about. Um, and by the way, let's do a little bit of quick math here. Mr. Zabrowski started with 280000 Now he has 110000 He did not lose all his money. He lost half of it, just a touch over half of it, but he did not lose all his money. Um, So what what is the problem here? Well, there's two problems in this. Number one problem is, is that he had all of his retirement nest egg in one single stock. And nowhere in the process did he learn, being the owner of almost $300,000, that that was a bad idea. Had that been diversified, I own mutual funds that own General Electric, and uh, their value was affected in a negative way by the fact that those that General Electric stock is in there, but it didn't affect me by half. It affected me a tiny, tiny bit, and the other stocks in the mutual funds went up more than General Electric went down, and so actually the net effect was that my mutual funds made money, even though they owned General Electric in there. That's the power of diversification. Spreading out your investments lowers your risk. He basically went to the racetrack and took 
$280,000 and placed a bet on one horse. And that horse came up lame. That's what this is. That's what you do when you play single stocks. You're asking for trouble. Well, my broker, I don't want to hear about your broker. And I don't want to hear about you bragging on the golf course on your fishing story either. Because that's what stock trading is. It's fishing stories. The one time it went up, for the 16 times you lost your butt. Because it's too much risk. And it's certainly too much risk for Mr. Zabrowski. Now here's an interesting part of this. He's 61 years old and he can't live on $85,000 a year. Really? Okay, there's probably something else needs to be adjusted in Mr. Zabrowski's life. Because if his, if his stock became worth zero, he has a pension of $85,000 a year. So probably needs some other stuff there going on, right? So he had to go back to work because he can't live on 85, because his stock value went down? That means he was using that stock to live off of because he wasn't living off his $85,000 a year pension. Plus, he's probably getting full Social Security, so he's probably getting another 15000 This guy's got $100,000 a year income in retirement at 61 years old. So I think we've got budget problems here more than just this stock going down. But it does provide a cautionary tale. I had a lady that worked for Procter & Gamble that I counseled with about 20 years ago, and I remember the same thing. She had 700000 and it went down to about three hundred. And she said, I've lost all my money. I said, no, you didn't lose all your money, but you did lose half of it. And it's a real problem. I mean, so, you know, instead of that income produced by $700,000, you are going to get half the income, you know, produced by 350000 give or take, right? And so this is the problem when you work for a company and you put all of your net worth in, or a large portion of your net worth, in that company's company stock because you quote unquote believe in the company. It is good to be loyal to the company that pays you. Loyalty, however, does not require you invest in their stock. And so I don't buy single stocks. And oh, by the way, by the time you're 61, you ought to figure out a way to live on $100,000 a year. Sometime during your life, you ought to get there. These are two things that we can take from this story. It's a long story, and it's worth reading the whole story. I didn't get into the whole thing, but this is uh, this is kind of how it comes down. The very last line is, the way GE stock is going, we might as well lose it all. What? No, you sell the 110 before you do lose it all. 